Minos. Tis I, Senor Tomat, and I'm afraid I do not have much time. I speak to you from the future. A horrible future. A future caused by you. That is right, because you have failed to become a Patreone. Because you have refused it to sign up for the Pessimist Productions Patreon. The future, she is, how you say, a tragic mess. Available for you right now if you sign up is over 520 hours of delicious steaming contento. That is over 21 days straight of Pessimist Productions. All for only five dolores. There are endless shows, patrons-only streams, specials, and if you dare to brave the $10 chef's table tier, a nearly endless fountain of everyone's favorite show, El Grease Trap. What are you waiting for, Tomatinos? What must I do to convince you? The future, she does not have to turn out this way. Utopia awaits those who join. Utopia, I say. I... Oh, I must go now, Tomatinos. My, my power to maintain this transmission. Fading. Join now. Join today. Or we all perish. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Flash Fry Deja Vu Edition. <laughs> Not for you guys, for us, because we recorded an entire show yesterday. And, uh, like, my power went out for, like, half of a second. And it just fucked everything up. Scotty, uh, Paul usually has a backup recording going, but he was just like, eh, it's fine. I don't need to do that today. Yeah. Scotty usually, usually has a backup recording going, but uh, his was fucked up as well. Yeah, I got disconnected and there was an echo. This is the think- second time that we've had like a completely cursed episode of Flash Fry that just refused to be released. So, Oh, oh by the way, uh, there's people saying that we made this up as an excuse. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean... Yeah. Of course there are. I mean, you know, I whatever. Like, I was like, why would we want to go and fucking make the same show again? Like, what's the incentive on our end? Like, oh, <laughs> I guess they, they probably think we just didn't do it yesterday, and we're just like, oh, well, we I'm can just release it. the fucking echo cast to prove that wrong. Uh, hopefully we got. Hopefully we got it this time. I don't fucking know. <laughs> as we long as we have, it. as long as we have one usable fucking file at the end of this, I'm a happy camper. Someone fucking get it, okay? You know, I mean, you know what? I'll record on this fucking. Uh, um, program as well just fucking in case yeah yeah start recording yeah 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 yeah. you're good what is this go away no cj's fucking it up now now his copy's fucked start recording just start it no he's recording on um the software used for the uh yeah yeah, sure go ahead okay i think it's recording maybe i don't fucking know it is anyway i don't yeah i mean i don't (laughs) i don't know what's going on but doesn't really matter because uh here's the first story uh incredibly rare red rainbow forms over birmingham in once in a lifetime moment Ooh. Wow. behold the red rainbow damn 2020 really is an evil year isn't it i know right this looks like some kind of dome that aliens put over a city to fucking torture the people within it Stephen King presents under- Somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> Somewhere under the rainbow. Oh, do we need like a Manson cover of that, TJ? The red rainbow. He, he can play like the fucking sheriff of the town or some shit. Like, give him some power. I'm a red rainbow. No, no, this I, I pulled this because it seems like an ominous omen of doom. Although it's a little late because yeah, I would say, wait a minute, <laughs> the the unless you know, I mean, I don't know, things might be getting worse. In fact, they, they probably will. They very well could, but uh, you know, still a little late. I think on the omen, probably should have just had that on January first, twenty twenty. Just the red rainbow shows up, and we know, like, oh, okay. People back. love these uh, people freaking out about rainbows stories. 
Remember the yeah. dub, double rainbow all the way guy that died recently? God rest yeah. his soul. He's gone now. He's Love gone. spectacles, right now. testicles, wallet, and watch. Oh, man. He was a good man. Double good rainbow guy. guy. He died too early, man. Sometime. He died as he lived. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was over Birmingham. Uh, it looked like with a rust colored dome covering the city. Footage shows the beginning of a red arc glowing on the right hand side of the screen before it expands and fills the whole horizon with a gigantic dome. Wow. Unlike the typical rainbow, the inside curve is also red, creating a stunning visual effect. Abigail Daisy Parks, who filmed the sensation, is heard gasping in shock through the clip, which was recorded on June 13th. This is amazing. Oh, my God. I've never seen anything like it, she exclaims before saying, wow, repeatedly. That's all you can say. Uh, do you have wow. actual footage of this, TJ, or just this picture? Um, I don't think this video up here is oh, fuck anything related. Are, we're not even trying to give me a fucking, Yeah, just yeah. Uh, just be glad for this picture and fucking. Just, yeah, you know. we can see it. Yeah, you can see the picture. There I mean, it I'll is. Honest, You're hard right. to, to concentrate on. The fucking crazy rainbow and all the sidebars, just like, uh, let's see, Lucy, uh, was a doe fan or I can't, I, it, it's kind of garbled for me. Ass Unleash, titties, ass and titties. Yeah. Unleash his boobs. Just like, all right, cool. What's, what's that about? <laughs> I, I, I was talking to Paul about this before you showed up. Um, we need to do an all daily star edition of Flash Fried one of these days. Wow. <laughs> That would be great. That would be a great yeah. idea. Just go from like Daily Star article to Daily Star article. Like, just follow the recommended. Fans that she done skimpy thong for bomb bearing display. It's like, yeah. Well, look at number five. Global Dude. disaster bigger than the coronavirus coming our way warns economy. Yeah, we clicked yeah, on that. They, out, they need to figure out some way to work tits into that one. Yeah. yeah. If there was a pair of tits in that one, it would be the perfect article. It should be like, Global disaster heading our way, according to big titty, big ass Instagram star. You know, hey, you got me <laughs> on it. Yeah, we clicked on that before the show, and it's total clickbait. It's just like all of it's clickbait. It's just like, yeah, there might be an even bigger pandemic, maybe, and a volcano might erupt. It's like, okay, <laughs> all right, thank you, Daily Star. <laughs> yeah, you know, we know. Yeah, Daily, Daily Star's got all the late breaking news, dude. Daily Star, we have ad block enabled, so sorry about that. <laughs> As if anything on their site isn't an ad. Here, well, I'll show you the global disaster bigger than the fucking uh, current. Trust me, if you didn't have ad block yeah. enabled right now, TJ, this would just be everything would just be an yeah, ad. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> the past couple of years have seen some of the most dramatic news events anyone can remember. Blah, 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 blah. blah. But according to a team of economists from uh, Deutsche Bank, the roller coaster ride is far from over. The team, led by Henry Allen, say there is at least one in three chance that um, that at least one of four major disasters will follow the coronavirus pandemic. Sometime in the next 10 years, say the Deutsche Bank analysts, we can expect either a major influenza pandemic with a death toll exceeding 2 million, a global catastrophic volcanic eruption, a major solar flare, or a global war. How is this any different than any other fucking year? It's yeah. not, this stuff is literally like this could all of this could happen at any fucking time. It's dog shit. And then what's that weird fuzzy math at the beginning of that, too? There's a one in three chance that at least one of four of these disasters will happen. It's like, where how did you come to that fucking determination? They asked some economists, which, by the way, why, why are economists predicting? Yeah, this? why are we listening to them about anything? They ruin everything they touch. Everything an economist touches turns to shit. Fuck them. Well-known fact. But, uh, there, you know, the nukes are coming. The doomsday oh, clock. Here, zombie fires may have been burning in the arc. Oh, oh dude, yeah, we have, to, we, we have to do an all Daily Star episode now. Like, everything yeah, we really on the have to. Is, it's, all, it's just total <laughs> unrequited fucking... Purely distilled clickbait in its finest form. Yeah. I mean, look at this shit. <laughs> a solar flare is going to get you, Scotty. This is like 2012 shit. Dude, dude, there's a one in three chance that one in four disasters might happen in the next three years, possibly, <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> uh, yeah. What Paul said. Um, We're all doomed. Some here's some more top stories. 
Um, da, 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 da. Let's not let, let, let's 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 not get caught in the fucking Daily Star fucking trap, dude. Oh, let's do it. No, let's not. We'll do a whole episode devoted to it, but we have actual stories that we all spent right, time right. pulling. Fine, fine. What a crybaby. I mean, what yeah. Crybaby wants actual news, huh? Fucking stupid is. Give me the real news, TJ. All right, hey, let's listen hey, to our fucking senators. Senators. Let's listen to our esteemed Louisiana senator. All right. I'm ready. Some intelligent fucking remarks from him. Are you ready, Scotty? I'm I'm mentally prepared. Are you ready? We should probably turn our cams off, gentlemen. Yeah, probably a good idea. One second. Oh yeah. <sighs> It'll help the video run smoother. All right. Are you ready? I was born ready. Are you ready? Uh, I'm actually not ready, TJ. It's going to be too profound. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm I have to admit, TJ. I'm I mean, scared. this is one of the smartest men in the Senate. So, yeah. I mean, like, pre- I'm just going to tell you right now. Prepare yourself for fucking wisdom. There's right? going to be some big brain, high level fucking ideas right okay. now. I'm all scared. Are you, are you ready? ready? As ready as I'm, I can possibly Are be. Are you ready? As ready as I can be, TJ. God damn it. Just play the fucking clip. All right. But one, before I do, I just want to ask one more time. Are you ready? I guess. We have people on Capitol Hill, I'm sad to say, that think cops are uh, guilty until proven innocent. And I'm going to say what I said the other day. If you hate cops just because you're co- they're cops, next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. Can't argue with that logic. Let's hear the rest. There's like fucking two more. I'm calling a crackhead next time. Uh, I don't think. I I don't think. Well, let me put it another way. I think we got more honest cops than we got honest politicians, and I think it's all just sad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you walk that one back? Did you did you think better of that one? And let me phrase that a little different now. <laughs> uh, no. <sighs> next time you in trouble, you hate the police so much. Next time you in trouble, call you a crackhead. Like okay, maybe I don't fucking will. <laughs> yeah. What's what's your fo- what's your phone number, Mister Kennedy? So I can yeah. do just that. Oh, uh, call a crackhead. Uh, how many how many times do you guess how how many times do you guess that this guy has played footsie with somebody in an airport bathroom stall? I'm just uh, wondering. Seventeen times. I'm gonna go with forty eight. Forty eight. Come on, TJ. It's clearly seventeen. Forty eight, dude. <clears throat> I like the Fox News saying Tampa police chief offered officers being targeted ambush attacks. Poor officers. Let me tell you, there's a lot of folks here on Capitol Hill that just think the police is guilty to prove or did it. Did. Well, let me tell you, dumb boy. Let me tell you something. If you, if you hate the police so much, next time your family's getting murdered, you call you crackhead instead of the police. <laughs> you see what that crackhead going to do for you. Uh, <clears throat> what's the argument here? Police better than crackheads. <laughs> okay, cool. Great fucking standard. Hey, when the crackheads put uh, together like a phone number, like what I can call like, I don't know, like 333 and then like a team of crackheads shows up. Maybe I'll consider it. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yes, crackheads. Uh, yes, uh, a burglar in progress. Uh, I promise you six crack rocks a piece if you get on the case. Those will be some motivated yeah, motherfuckers. Like, I mean, if, find we all, if we all just like fucking, if we were prepared to give them crack to solve our problems, I bet you know. Oh, that shit would get solved. Yeah, they'd be fucking on the streets. Like, who stole that shit? Who stole that shit? Yep. Damn, yeah, that 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 tone of voice made it seem like uh, whatever, dude. I'm fucking I'm racist, TJ. A racist there, man. All it's right. all right. You know what? That was a white crackhead, Scotty. That, that was a white crackhead. Was a white crackhead. Didn't sound like a TJ. Well, like you were to affect. doesn't sound like anything. Lots sure. of people talk in lots of different ways, Scotty. That was a white crackhead, my friend. But you're racist. It was a white crackhead. 
Did, All right, whatever. Yeah, 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 shut up, Scotty. You're racist. Shut up. You shut You're up, racist, T-shirt. Scotty. You You're shut up, T-shirt. You're racist, no, you bitch. shut up. You shut well, up. You're a fucking piece of shit, Scotty. You're a fucking piece of shit. You know what, TJ? Better shut what? your fucking mouth right now. Shut your fucking mouth right now. Just stop, TJ. Just stop it right now. Or you know what? Some bad's gonna happen to you. I don't know what's gonna happen to you, TJ, but some real bad's gonna happen real to you. Bad. If this keeps oh, if this no. keeps escalating between the two of you, I'm gonna call a crackhead. I'm just right. warning oh, you. Later. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fine. We're good. I'm We're just good. warning you. Okay, man. Okay, fair enough. So Disneyland was, I guess, gonna reopen on July 17th, but they've uh they've decided they're not gonna do that after What a all. shame. I couldn't uh-huh. wait for kids to ride the coronavirus monorail. <laughs> uh, Disneyland has been forced to postpone the uh, July 17th reopening of its Anaheim theme parks and delay the planned July 23rd reopening of two Disneyland resort hotels while it awaits uh, theme park reopening guidelines from the state. Uh, the state of California has now indicated that it will not issue theme park reopening guidelines until sometime after July 4th, according to a statement from Disneyland. Given the time required for us to bring thousands of cast members back to work and restart our business, we have no choice but to delay uh, the reopenings of our theme parks and resort hotels until we receive approval from government officials. Uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom uh, has been in contact with Disney and other California theme park operators um, about his concerns regarding reopening. The governor appreciates Disney's responsiveness to his concerns about reopening amid the recent increases in COVID-19 infections across many Southern California counties. Newsom's director, uh, communications director, Nathan Click, said via email. Uh, The state and our public health experts continue to be in contact with the company and their workers, as well as other theme parks in the state, as we track and combat the spread of the virus. Uh, and of course, Disney has been closed since mid March at this point. I mean, the issue with Disney, I mean, it's not necessarily walking around outside, especially if you have social distancing. But it's like if you go into a restaurant, I mean, boom, you get on like Paul said, the monorail, boom, you get on a ride, boom. It's like, yeah, I guess the whole, I guess the the least fun part of Disney, like walking from place to place, you'll be okay. But literally everything else you're gonna do there is, I mean, the chance of spreading the disease just is too fucking high. I don't know when they can be able to reopen these parts. <laughs> Apparently, they're using this time though as an opportunity to remake Splash Mountain with a princess and the frog theme. Weird. Which I- <laughs> no, man, that's fucked up, dude. It's fucked up, man. The ride itself is not racist. The Song of the South is racist, but the ride itself was never fucking racist. Yeah, they're trying to sweep the whole Song of the South under the rug. Like, I mean, yeah, you can't, can't really blame do that. I mean, that. Uh, <laughs> in this day and age. It, it fucking. I'll tell you what. I guess one of my favorite rides, but I mean, whatever. I guess it's fucking. We're not. We're now too woke to have Splash Mountain anymore, dude. Zip but it do da zip but it day. I mean, why, yeah. Why, 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 it's like you have some childhood nostalgia for that fucking drop, dude. Now I have some Princess in the Frog drop. Whatever. I guess it'll be all right. This yeah. is here, kids. You listen up to old Uncle Remus. Slavery ain't too bad. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, obviously, that, but yeah, but the ride itself was not like promoting racism or anything. You get on that ride, the first thing they do is give you a little clan hood, you know? Yeah, they're like, yeah, congratulations, you're in the clan now. You go by the cross burnings and stuff, you know. All that yeah. hard work retooling the haunted mansion goes to waste. We replaced all the ghosts with Disney cast members with COVID, and they cough at you as as they go by. Spooky. <laughs> that is pretty spooky. Spooky. Dude, that's a fucking that's a haunted mansion from thrill to it though. You gotta admit, that's a thrilling haunted mansion. Like, ooh, we're gonna get COVID. Let's get tested right after we get off the ride. Testing station right here. See if you contracted COVID on this ride. Paul's Mickey Mouse is definitely the scariest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life, dude. Spooky. <laughs> He's evil as fuck. I love it. All right. Uh, more great news from our home state here. Uh, Louisiana paramedic fired for post that shows KKK hood. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it is. <sighs> Lafayette, Louisiana. A Louisiana musician has been fired from his job as a paramedic after he posted an image on social media of a person wearing a Ku Klux Klan hood in a grocery store and a drawing of a car running into protesters. Uh, the posts and underlying insensitivity and disrespect shown by the posts are not in any way representative of our company, the Acadian 
uh, companies said in a statement on Facebook Tuesday announcing the firing of Bergeron. Uh, Bergeron, who had been a paramedic with the company, also leads a South Louisiana music group called Jamie Bergeron and the Kickin' Cajuns. The Kickin' Cajuns, dude. The Kickin' Cajuns. Like some band that plays at a casino on a Saturday night. Uh Uh, In an apology, blah, 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 blah. Um, So I I thought the comment was pretty funny, too. Go to the first fucking um, the first comment here. Let me join the discussion. Um. So he posts something and gets doxxed and fired, but, but protesters not beating beat people. I'm sorry, protesters riot, beat people, and vandalize with no repercussions. Got it. What's the guy talking about? The people that like the woman that lit the Wendy's There's on all fire. kinds of repercussions for the yeah. fucking protesters. Why have people been arrested? What are you talking about? They yeah. get, there's been plenty of arrests. There's been plenty of people who got fucking shot in the face with rubber bullets. Some Bullshit. Yeah, that's not what I've seen. The cops show up and throw flower petals at them. Please don't loot. (laughs) Oh, stop looting. Okay, well, you looted. Here's some flowers, though. Yeah. Good old Louisiana. I do love that, like, the the big kind of cultural shift that we have has, like, people coming coming out and going, like, mask off because they're frustrated, you know? Yeah, this will uh, this will get them too. Census shows white decline, non-white majority among youngest. <gasps> All right, guys. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. 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 Paul, don't panic. Here's what we gotta do. We gotta have them FEMA camps, not for the white folks, for the young folks now. Round them up unless they're white. The white people can go free. Round them up. Uh, re-educate them, and then everything in this society will be just fine. Bring back the internment camps, boy. Uh, for the generation of Americans not yet old enough to drive, the demographic future has arrived. For the first time, non-whites and Hispanics were a majority of people under age 16 in 2019. An expected demographic shift that will grow over the coming decades, according to figures released by the U.S. Census Bureau on Thursday. Uh, we are browning. Browning from the bottom up in our age structure. I don't want oh, browning. Ah, Is that what they're calling it? Ah, ah, this is going to be a diversified century for the United States. <laughs> the with the youngest generation. There's got to be a better fucking term for Don't like prepare yourself for the browning. <laughs> browning sounds like shit in your pants. It is, Paul. <laughs> oh, hold on, guys. I just browned. I gotta. I gotta go. I gotta go change my pants. Browning. <laughs> shit in its pants. I tell you who's going to shit their pants. A lot of white people in this oh, country, because yeah. like this demographic shift has been in the news for like since I was a kid. You know, because oh, I've yeah. seen it coming. Now that, yeah. now that it's here, though, the numbers don't lie. But yeah, now that it's here, oh my goodness gracious, there's going to be some angry white people. You will not replace us. You will not replace <laughs> us. It's like yes, you yes, will they will. Replace <laughs> us. Oh, boy. Uh, at the same yeah. time, the number of non-Hispanic whites in the U.S. has gotten smaller in the past decade as deaths surpass births in this aging demographic, according to the Census Bureau population estimates. Well, I mean, if white people, all those white people that are supposedly so afraid of this care, they should have always went out and had a bunch of kids. Oh, please please don't give them that idea, please. Oh, Paul, they ain't going to do it. It's not going to happen. I mean, it's already too late for this really to happen anyway. I mean, I guess it's not too late, but I mean, like, if they really were truly that worried about some arbitrary number then that's what they should have done and they haven't done it. So this is the, this is the result. There's a, there's immigration to our country. You know, it's, it, it's been, people have known about this shit for fucking decades. Like you said, this shit goes back. Like, I think this was started first. We started reporting like maybe like the seventies or eighties is when I started covering this in the news. And it's like, I've seen it every year since then, like less and less whites, less and less whites. It's like, okay. I mean, right. I don't, it's, Fertility it's, rates are generally higher amongst Hispanic people as well, so it's just like a matter of time. Well, well I'm also it's it's it, there's cultural differences, but I mean, honestly, it shows after about one or two generations, they most people have about the same birth rate as white people in this country. So it's white really, people. I think there needs to be less people in general. <laughs> you know what I mean, personally. So I don't care what the, the people remain look like, as long as they're fucking smart. Pretty soon you're going to look at a crowd like this and finding a white person will be like finding Waldo. Oh, man, I can't wait. Oh, my God. I can't wait until this country is just all just a beautiful shade of beige, man. 
The Beige Nation. I love it. Let's do it. Mm hmm. Race Trader Paul don't care nothing about his own people. I mean, we've been calling this place a melting pot forever. Let's yeah, start. Let's start. Know. Let's start melting the pot, man. Let's yeah. do it. I mean, what's what? I see no problem with this picture of these people. They all just look like they're living their lives. What's the problem? I hope that somehow we all turn green. We all turn green. Oh, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd be fine being green. If Why? you don't see the problem with this picture here, Scott, it ain't nothing I can do for you. <laughs> you can it's like that. playing Where's Waldo, except it's Where's the White Man. Where's Whitey? Where's Whitey? This is what you want your 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 kids to grow up in right here, Scotty. They're gonna grow up there regardless. I do feel <laughs> like I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna make some seismic shift in the demographics of our country. I do kind of feel like the thing that I feel is wrong is there's just too many humans packed into this little tiny space. But yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, there's I, nothing I can do about that. So. Uh, U.S. hits highest single day of new coronavirus cases with more than 45,000. We're number one. We're number one. We're number one. <laughs> you guys, you guys never say we're number one. I'm going to call you guys out right now. You guys never say we're number one. You know what? You're right. This time we're number one. Dude, I did a whole we're episode. Number- I did a whole episode called America, the, the world's biggest dick. Yeah, that's I true. Also, the number one. Time. Did Paul ever say that? Yeah. Patriotic Paul did. Oh, patriotic Paul. Patri- well, Patriot patriotic. Paul. That was a two-part episode. The U.S. saw a record number of new coronavirus cases in a single day with uh, 45,557 diagnosis diagnoses uh, reported Wednesday, according to a tally by NBC News. Uh, Wednesday's cases topped the previous highest daily count from April 26 during the first peak of the pandemic in the U.S., uh, by more than 9,000 cases. According to NBC News tracking data, the World Health Organization reported its single-day record on Sunday with more than uh, 183,000 ca- new cases worldwide. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so it's pretty much over is what I'm getting from this. Time to reopen, everybody. It's, like, uh, <laughs> it's like the dolphins from um, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So long and thanks for all the fish, dude. <laughs> We're, we're just to, fucking idiots, dude. Time to go. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're things, we're, most countries have gotten this under control, but our country is like still like fucked. Thank God for Brazil. I'm, I've seen all those charts and shit. Yeah, Brazil's fucking up worse than us. So even really, in this instance, we're still not number one. Brazil's number one. We're Damn. number two. That doesn't what? feel good. Let's get out there and spread data. this virus around yeah. a little harder. You know, yeah, I think they got more per capita though, right? Hey, CIA, mm-hmm. look. Go start spreading that more in Brazil so you can be like, look, we, we fucked it up pretty bad, but not as bad as Brazil. I've seen so many charts where the coronavirus is like it's up and then it goes down. Right. And for other countries like here's Spain. Here's Italy. Here's the United States. <laughs> like, oh, shit. What the fuck did we do? Oh, dude, there. Every chart I've seen has been like this. Maybe like it plateaus a little bit, then it just keeps going up. Like we've never yeah. really hit a point where like we stopped having cases. Yeah, that hasn't happened. I remember while we were all looking at like it, places like Italy and shit, and being like, ha, 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 fuck, "At least we're not as bad as that." And they're like almost completely recovered, and you know, we're back into the shit, fucking full steam, full, you know, whatever. I just can't believe we're so stupid. Well, I mean. It's not really that hard for me to believe. You guys pull the stuff from like uh, the meeting they had in Florida. I think it was in like Tampa or I forget where in Florida. Where like the people were like like no these masks, you know like like they're, like they're basically. Just oh like, no, I heard about that though. They, they've just gone on these fucking tad. Like, dude, there's people right now. They're just like it's basically immoral to wear a mask. It's like it's against religion to wear a mask. Like what? we have perfectly good like this wait, one. What religion is it against? What, what wait huh? What religion is yeah, it against? They said that. They said that the count, the city council is committing crimes against humanity by making them wear a mask. Oh boy! All right, crimes and that, and that they would be held accountable. Okay, it's like these people are insane. All right, it's time for civil war part two. Let's just rename the South Corona Town <laughs> and let all these people stay there, and then just take Trump's wall and move it north a little a little ways. You know what I mean? Wall them off in Corona Town where they don't have to wear masks and just let them die off. It's about that time. Let's do it. Let me get the fuck out of here first, though, please. Let's thin the herd a little bit. It's time to start thinning the herd. Like, let everyone just, yeah, yeah. Man, oh, <laughs> this story again, huh? Yeah, I decided to uh, 
we killed it yesterday, but uh, today I decided we'll just bring it back because, because you know, that's we, a rare thing. I don't think it's ever happened. In well, it's because we usually uh, don't fucking our shows usually don't fucking it's alive die. But uh, anyway, so this I think the whole reason that our show failed yesterday is because we fucking dropped this story. I think this us dropping this story was the worst fucking idea ever. So I don't even get I don't even get this meme because I haven't seen Breaking Bad. So it's it's there is a scene in Breaking Bad where Walter White, the main character, brings home a pizza, um, you know, and his he goes in there. His wife's being a cunt to him or whatever. I think his kids don't don't know. He's having family troubles and shit. So he gets pissed. He goes outside. He fucking throws the pizza up. It fucking flies on the roof. Okay. And, uh, it's you know I'm whatever. I I don't think the I don't think the moment really would have stuck with me if not for these people who apparently it did. Well, stick. It was crazy too because apparently it was done on the first take too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's been more than a decade since the infamous Breaking Bad episode Caballo Sin Nombre aired on AMC. Uh, the second episode of the third season has plenty of memorable scenes that drive the story forward. But the most important is the moment when Walter White tosses an entire pizza onto the roof of his house. This scene, which actor, actor Brian Cranston achieved in a single take uh, or accomplished, or whatever, it doesn't mean it makes the same, is both dramatic and funny, just like Breaking Bad itself. But fans can't let go. Even 10 years later, people continue to show up at the real house in Albuquerque and waste pizzas by throwing them on the roof. Things have gotten so bad that Vince Gilligan went on the record urging fans to stop vandalizing the home where people actually live. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, the scene in question shows Walter uh, arriving home with a gift offering for his family. At this point, he and Skyler are fighting because he's not, she's not exactly thrilled that her husband is a meth manufacturer. Walt tries to smooth things over. Uh, by coming home with a pizza, but Skyler won't accept his apology and locks the door. In frustration, Walter hurls the pizza into the air. It lands on the roof of the house. And ever since, fans have been seeking out the house and arriving in droves to waste pizza. Things got so bad that Gilligan had to plead with people to stop. Blah, 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 blah. Where's, okay. Uh, so here's uh, the, peop- the so people. The people that there's Francis and uh, Louise or Louis Padilla. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we've had pizzas on our roof. We've had pizzas on our driveway pizzas until we're sick of looking at pizzas. I'll sit outside with a shotgun and a rocking chair, you know, like granny from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> cool. Um, He's got the wrong idea, man. I'd put plastic on my roof and I'd have some sensors up there that would alert me whenever a pizza hits. So I could just fucking go through a trap door and snag that motherfucker and eat it. <laughs> Yeah, dude. You know what I'd be doing? I'd be fucking out there with like some like I'd be out there like, hey, fucking uh, five bucks. Throw a pizza on the roof. You know what I mean? Throw a pizza on the roof. Step right up. Don't be shy. Throw a pizza on the roof. Have like a fucking target and shit, dude. Come on. Yeah, like put a little target. This is exactly where it landed in the show. See how close you can get to Walter White's fucking famous pizza toss. You know? Yeah, let's just make money off this shit, dude. Look, we're this America. Capitalism rules everything. Just set up a little. Here's uh, here's Vince Gilligan talking about it. There is nothing original or funny or cool about throwing a (laughs) pizza on this lady's roof. I disagree. It's been done before. The fact that it pisses you off makes it kind of funny and cool. So the fact that it pisses you off and the homeowners off makes it kind of fun. Yeah. People live in these houses. They're trying to go about their lives just like we all are. Trying to help. Trying to give them some pizzas. Like an asshole. Well. I'm not saying go after them or per- personally or anything, but maybe take down their plate number. Something within reason. Homeowners were forced to erect a fence. Yeah, well, you know what? That's why we're going to build the Pizza Shooter 9000. Yeah, dude. The pizza fucking 50 fucking feet. I think the Ninja Turtles actually had something like that. I'm pretty sure they did. Uh, you know what, though? Look, here's a solution. These people need to fucking sue the shit out of fucking Vince Gilligan and be like, look, we want a new fucking house somewhere in Albuquerque. Get paid. Oh, look, look, look hold on, Sky. Hold on. Tear Listen that house down. Listen to this shit. Unfortunately, even Gilligan's warning wasn't enough to dissuade fans. The homeowners eventually had to erect a six foot high chain link fence to keep people from trespassing on their property. But they said even that didn't stop breaking bad fans from throwing pizzas. We feel like we can't leave because when we do, Something happens that's ridiculous. Uh, wait, when we do well, something, something happens and that's ridiculous. Okay, whatever. Uh, oh, oh, you mean like 
they're not talking about leaving permanently. They're talking about every time they leave the house. Right. Uh, we don't want to gate ourselves in. We're the ones who's sick being locked up. We did nothing wrong. What do you mean locked up? You're being delivered fresh, delicious pizza for free Free. every goddamn day in grates. Uh, And I wish my apartment was used for like, oh, man, Walter White left a giant bucket of ice cream out in front of his apartment. (laughs) Man, you wouldn't hear a fucking word of complaint from me. A Breaking Bad RV tour guide confirmed the accusations. Francis Padilla has made it very clear that you're not going to come to her house and do whatever you want. She t- she doesn't mind people coming to see the property. She just wants them to respect her privacy. Sounds like she, she she's a bitch. She's a bitch, man. I mean, like, how are they fucking? How are they Let's infringing on your privacy by throwing a pizza at you at, at your house? Yeah, that's, a, that's not a fucking. That's not a privacy violation. They're not like busting into your house and throwing pizza everywhere. Yeah. They're giving you a pizza every once in a while. What's the problem? Dude, I'm telling you, they just need to get paid. They'll probably fucking live in a fucking mansion in Albuquerque after they do this. Like, look, we've been harassed for years. Fucking Vince Goga can buy the pizza house. You can fucking charge people money to throw a pizza on the roof. They can go live in a nice house somewhere else. Everyone wins. Yeah. There you go. Vince Gilligan's fucking, you know, he's fucking loaded at this point. He made Breaking Bad. He's fucking rich as shit. Probably so. For like fucking three or four hundred thousand dollars. Pay for their fucking move to a nice other, some nice house somewhere else. They're happy. They get to fucking live like, there's probably a house in the same neighborhood for sale. They'll be fine. Dude, I want to find, if they move, I want to find their new house and throw pizza on the roof of that, dude. <laughs> it that was would be hilarious. Bad. It was never about the show oh, about you, dude. What the fuck, dude? You hate them that much? The oh, first, the first day that they're there, they're like, oh. funny as fuck is all. The first like, day oh. they're there, they're like, oh yeah, man, finally. finally. And they go outside, and there's just pizza everywhere. There's pizza on the roof again. Yeah. Cheese pizza dripping right off the gutter. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? It never ends. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's Good hilarious. Fucking suicidal people, man. You guys want to drive these people to a fucking early <laughs> grave. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yes, uh, do. COVID chaos. Pakistan plane crashed, killing 97 because pilots were distracted talking about coronavirus while trying to land. Uh, Damn. That's for the reason. Yeah. I also read somewhere else that um, like apparently like 40% of pilots in Pakistan just have fake pilot licenses. Oh, that's, that's great. Bad. Uh, a probe into the horrific plane crash in Pakistan last month was found that the pilots were distracted while talking about the coronavirus and failed to carry out a set of essential procedures before landing. <laughs> okay. Uh, a couple of Darwin Award winners here. Yep. 97 people were killed when a Pakistan International Airlines jet crashed en route to Jinnah, Jinnah, whatever, International Airport in Karachi in uh, on May 22nd. Pretty brutal looking crash too. Yeah. Uh, Today the it's like it happened main, in a residential area. Yeah. Aviation Minister Gulam Sarwar Khan said that human error on the part of the pilot and co-pilot, as well as air traffic control, caused the plane to crash. Um, the probe also found the Airbus A320 aircraft was 100 percent fit to fly, which contradicted uh, pre- previous claims that the crash had resulted from engine failure. Uh, presenting the findings of the investigation in Parliament, Mr. Khan said that the pilots were not focused because of the coronavirus and were overconfident when approaching landing. He said the pilot and co-pilot were not focused, and throughout they were having a conversation about uh, corona. The virus was on their minds, their families were affected, and they were having a discussion about it. Yeah, uh, the also found that the pilots ignored instructions from air traffic control who warned them against landing while approaching the runway as the plane was flying an altitude of almost 5,000 feet. Uh, too high can you imagine <laughs> they're sitting there fucking in this heated conversation about corona and over their yeah. fucking headsets flight 72 pull up pull up you're gonna be quiet for a second hold on we're t- now listen this corona shit is serious man you're five thousand feet up it's too high no no you listen here <laughs> you listen to me uh, quit interrupting okay. When they were in landing position, they were warned by the controllers, but they said, I'll manage, and then started discussing Corona again. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Wow. Shut up, air traffic control. We're, we're, yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. Hey, you know what? You do your fucking job, and I'll do mine. I am doing my fucking job. Now, whatever. We're going to land this fucking thing. Oh, no. 
like the aircraft had briefly scraped the runway before the pilots uh, decided to abort the landing, causing significant damage to the landing gear. It spent the next 17 minutes in the air before attempting to land again. The probe added, but the pilots failed to inform air traffic control that the landing gear had locked up again. The aircraft then plummeted uh, 1,340 meters short of the runway into a residential area of Karachi, destroying 29 properties, with Mr. Khan today confirming that the owners of the properties would be fully compensated. Shockingly, the report also found that fragments of the engine were left strewn across the runway for 12 hours, posing a significant danger to other aircraft. Uh, sounds like yeah. sounds like there was a lot of failures uh, to go around here. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, don't fly yeah. Pakistan. Yep, that's the lesson. Um, you know, I was already convinced before this article, but now I'm even more convinced. Wow. Very racist, Scotty. Very racist. Saying Pakistan, uh, can't fly a plane, Scotty. That's what you're what saying? I'm saying. I'm actually what I'm saying is that any sort of regulatory system there has completely failed and is non-existent. Uh, they left parts of the equipment on the runway for 12 hours. They tried to land like a fucking a jet does on a fighter fuck or like an aircraft carrier. Uh, they ignored the instructions of air traffic control. We don't even know if they were licensed properly to fly these aircraft or even trained properly to fly, fly these um, Airbus A320s. Uh, flying aircraft is very difficult, and there's a lot of fucking moving parts and things you have to do properly in a certain order. And mm-hmm. clearly, those guys are not qualified to do it. So it's nothing to do with what they looked like. It's their training. And the v- fact that the fact... I mean, like, look, there was just so many fucking facts here that fuck were, were fucking fucked up. There's no way you'd want to fly in that shit. So you guys uh, also, like me, fans of uh, botched restorations... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the big one was I think there's a picture of it in this article that Jesus one. Is the famous uh, Jesus one. Yeah. Well, now somebody's fucked fucked up Jesus's mom, too. By the way, uh, that the um, that picture of Jesus uh, was never like considered some like great masterpiece or anything before. No, uh, but it was fun. I guess it was funnier to make it seem like it was. But anyway, um, way more people now flock to go see the. Uh, the botched restoration and then ever flock there to see the fucking Jesus mural. And in fact, they, they've made a ton of money off of it as well. So a lot of times these botched restorations are actually, uh, on pretty purpose. Uh, well that one was not on purpose, but people loved it anyway. And still do to this day, they still meme it and stuff. But anyway, that's not about this. This, um, a priceless 17th century painting of the Virgin Mary by Baroque artist, uh, Bartolome Esteban Morillo. Murillo. See, they, you know, we don't, I've never seen this painting before. Have you seen this painting before? No. But now all of a sudden it's, I mean, there's a lot of priceless paintings I haven't seen. It's it's probably not priceless. It's probably fucking not worth shit, but it's funnier if it's priceless has become the latest piece of art ruined by a botched restoration job. (laughs) A private art collector in Valencia, Spain was charged uh, 1200 little weird sea things uh roughly yeah yeah yeah, whatever roughly 1350 bucks to repair morillo's the immaculate conception of el escorial according to the guardian but the job did not go as planned sure it did let's see come on come on come in Stupid piece of shit. TJ's computer runs like it's from 1997. If it was 97, it wouldn't fucking even. Yeah, what's that? You've got bail. You've got bail. I think they did a good job. Look at that. Uh, what the fuck, dude? I did a good one. That's good. Ouch. Uh, this looks like a fucking kindergartner did the restoration. Ouch, dude. That's. Yeah. I think they did a pretty good job there. That's a downgrade in my book, but hey, whatever. I think they really fucking nailed it. And then, of course, this is the famous one that, uh, you know, <laughs> just looks <laughs> like you're, a, you're, you're never going to top this. this. You know, you're like it, never going to top that one. No, no. I mean, because that one, like at least the one above, you can see what the person was thinking. Like this one, the the Jesus one. I mean, I don't even know, dude. He looks like a Morlock or something. Like, I don't even know what they were going for. Looks like a caveman. Hi, TJ. 
your argument for destroying these classic works of art is that well they made more money so the ends justify the means like no people shouldn't be allowed to do this unless they know what the fuck they're doing good old capitalist tj uh i don't know i watched a video on uh on on the story behind this I'm thing not it's like the most famous painting of all time or whatever but i'm saying it should it shouldn't just be fucking destroyed by some virtually, there, was virtually, there was virtually no mention of this painting of jesus anywhere online until this woman did this i mean that doesn't matter though because like it's still a good painting priceless and shit it's not priceless if you look if you look at the fucking painting before they fucked it up you can tell it was done by somebody that had some fucking skill in painting it's still a nice painting painting of jesus it's just a piece of history tj that i something should be destroyed by some idiot that's why that's how i feel i don't think it's way more people have enjoyed this piece of art so it's when it's on the internet, go, ha oh, ha, it's funny, ha oh, ha, it's funny. I, uh, it's you know so what we make you? Let's but, knock down the Coliseum and pray in your rubble. It'd be funny. Oh, it's funny. No, no. Church. The church that this thing is on display in did not choose to try to restore the original Jesus. They have people flocking to go look at this woman's attempted rest. Oh, right, because because it's for the lulls, dude. If if they did that with every classical painting, then no one would give a shit about that either. Yeah, let's put a big so, pink dildo on the Mona Lisa because more people will probably enjoy it that way. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, appeal the popularity, TJ. Like, oh, there's more people think it's funny, so it's better. It's like, yeah, maybe they made some more money off it, but they ruined a work of art. I don't care if it's priceless. They didn't ruin a work of art. <laughs> they created a work of art that's way more <laughs> enjoyed than the original. Oh, TJ. Why is it enjoyed? Is it enjoyed because it's sincerely because people believe it's a great work of art? No, it's because they fucked up another piece of art. Yeah, they, they, they come to look at it because it's not art, because it looks yeah. like a blob of shit that somebody <laughs> finger painted over a piece of art. Uh, No, I don't know. Nobody's don't coming there no. to appreciate it, TJ. They're yeah. going there to laugh at it. Exactly. Yeah, in, like, in, in a fucking fun way, though. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, admit, whatever. There's something special about it, TJ. <laughs> Listen to TJ's fucking. Just like not every botch restoration looks. Not a, every botch restoration captures the um, the popular imagination the way this one has. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking god, dude. Uh, <laughs> he looks uh, like he's halfway between a werewolf transformation or some shit. <laughs> it looks like he's got like a hor- horrifying neck beard. It doesn't look. He doesn't even. What are you talking about? It doesn't even look like a human being anymore. It looks like some kind of weird. I don't even know what the fuck it looks like. It's a strange I mean, thing, you know what I mean? The alien or whatever, the little weird no guy. whatsoever. It's just like kind of like ventures off to the side. I mean, of course, TJ, TJ people are going to come look at this fucking thing because, like, I mean, look at it. It's fucking weird. Of course, they're going to come look at something like, hey, you see this fucking uh, old work of art that, yeah, granted, a bunch of people probably didn't fucking come to see before. But I mean, this thing- saying, her restoration is way more popular than this thing ever was. Well then, like, for all the wrong reasons, though. Yeah, for all the wrong reasons, TJ. Whatever. She got permission from the fucking guy who was running the church to because do the she, restoration. She lied and said she knew what she was doing. So of course, you know, well, no, the, she, she, no, that's you, you see, you're falling for a false narrative because she'd actually restored other pieces in that church before and done a reasonably good job. Uh, in this case, though, she bit off way more than she could chew. Uh, she didn't know what she was doing in terms, like she'd done little touch-up things before. This was way too big of a project for her. She didn't know what the fuck she was doing. Yeah. She was way and over her head. In essence, she, she overestimated her abilities and lied. And right. Just the person and saying, oh, yeah. yeah. I think she just genuinely thought, she didn't know what she was oh, getting. So now you know the state of mind of the person we're talking about, TJ. Oh, you know what, TJ? Watch. I've, I've actually going to face every work of art, TJ, because more people will be attracted to it. Look, some Zoomers think the fucking that this famous work of art is funnier now because they painted a giant dick on his fo- on fo- the uh, Michelangelo's forehead or whatever. So hey, I mean, whatever, dude, you can make that argument. I'm just saying, I still think they ruined it. Mm-hmm. The in- the intended artist did ne- never intended for this vision. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's basically a new work of art, but it's it's fucking stupid. It's childish. Anyone can go make this fucking thing. Hey, you go do it then. You go create a work of art that captures the popular imagination. And- oh, look, somebody threw a turd at Pic- somebody threw a turd at Picasso's Guernica. <laughs> look, more people want to come and see the turd than the actual piece of art. Yeah. Your favorite Dolly paintings, TJ. Let's have them restored. Yep. You guys are Philistines, dude. I don't think you guys understand art. Um, of course. So here we go. 
This is, I guess, uh, some kind of ad. Oh, yeah. Cam's off, dude. The, the fucking Trump campaign. Dude, the Dementia Olympics are heating up, fellas. I don't know if you've yeah, seen this. They? I don't know if you've seen this ad yet. I've not seen it. But prepare yourselves. Does Joe Biden have the mental capacity to keep America safe? We know he's in love with that's, that, that's who we are. Is Joe Biden making any sense? Well, let, 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 let him go. All men and women created him by the... Go, oh, you know the you know the thing. Does Joe Biden have dementia? We can afford to do it. We can't we can afford we can't afford not to do it. I'm going to beat Joe Biden. In a world losing its mind, <laughs> we don't need a president who's already lost his. The committee to defend the president. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! They're heating up, dude. It's dementia happening. Dementia Olympic. Let the shit flinging begin. I can't wait, man. It's oh, dude! Fantastic. I think there's gonna be a Dementia Olympics part two with all the campaign ads. In a world losing its mind, do we need a president who's already lost his? Hey, hey dude! Can I? I, I want to make the. Uh, I, even though I don't like Joe Biden or his campaign, I, I, I want to make the uh, Trump ad. Talking about the burbs. <laughs> what? The burbs graveyard? Graveyard? Uh, what, what was it? Graveyard? Oh, yeah. What was that? The burb graveyard. Burb graveyard or some shit. Yeah. The the bird graveyards up from it's the windmills. Bird graveyard <laughs> or some shit. I don't even. Yeah, because it was Trump that hates windmills for some reason. I mean, yeah, like, windmills kill the burbs. The bird, this is their burb gra- graveyards. This is basically just a dare because, dude, there are every bit as much fucking uh, evidence out there that Trump is stumbling and bumbling and fucking up words than there is oh, Joe Biden. So Joe Biden should just release the counter ad, like you know, yeah. The burb- yeah, make it Bird, twice as Bird, long. Did you guys see uh, Penn's trying to run up the ramp <laughs> and falling? What? Yeah, he was going. Yeah, he was going uh, boarding a fucking flight, and he's like, so he's like, I'm gonna run up the stairs. Uh, I was basically on the tarmac to the plane, and he fucking fell. And he popped right back oh. up and shit. I was like, well, I'll give it. to I mean, like, you don't have enough bounce to run up the stairs, but at least you made an effort. Oh, you guys haven't seen that? Uh, uh-uh. I, I didn't see it. No. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Uh, so let's kill it for a second. I, mean, I don't really care that much, but you know, whatever. Could be funny. <laughs> Want to see him fall? Dum dum da dum dum da dum da dum da dum 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 da dum dum da dum. Plump, plump. He's looking pretty spry there. He's looking pretty. Oh shit! He almost made it too. He was almost to the top, man. Great recovery. Great fucking recovery, Mike. Nobody like saw my, it. One of my cats will do that shit, you know? Yeah. Great. Good job. Good job, I'm Mike Pence. Fall off a counter and then just be like, yeah, that's what I intended to do. Fuck you. Roger Stone. <laughs> fucking yeah. God. trusted news. That's fucking goblin, dude. <laughs> he is descended from go- a goblin royalty or something. He really sure. does look like he works somewhere in Gringotts, doesn't he? Roger Stone received favorable treatment from Department of Justice because he's pals with Trump, says prosecutor. The Justice Department gave Roger Stone unprecedentedly favorable treatment because of his longtime relationship with President Trump. A former prosecutor on the case is expected to tell Congress Wednesday. No, uh. What I heard repeatedly was that Roger Stone was being treated differently from any other defendant because of his relationship with the president, Aaron Zelensky. One of the uh, career Justice Department officials who prosecuted Stone will say in an opening statement released Tuesday, uh, Mr. Zelensky is scheduled to testify Wednesday before the Democrat uh, Democratic led House Judiciary Committee, which is investigating allegations of political interference by Attorney General William P. Barr a department antitrust uh, attorney and a former official in the uh, George W. Bush Justice Department will also testify. Uh, Mr. Zelensky and three other prosecutors resigned from the uh, Stone case in February after Justice Department leadership overruled their recommendation for a stiff seven to nine year prison sentence for Stone, who was convicted of uh, witness tampering, lying to Congress and obstructing its Russia investigation. The recommendation created a political firestorm in Washington with Democrats accusing Attorney General William P. Barr of doing favors for his pres- uh, for the president's friends. Uh, a federal judge ultimately uh, sentenced Stone to just over three years in prison. Mr. Zelensky is set to tell lawmakers the Justice Department wanted a light sentence for Stone because of his connection to Mr. Trump. Well, no shit. Yeah, I mean... 
No what? shit. Being friends with the president gets you a different treatment in the justice system. It's fucking insane. Somehow it does. You got to be I crazy. It. Yeah, it's, it's 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 shocking to learn that the U.S. government is again corrupt. I <laughs> mean, not the U.S. government though, Scotty. Only Trump. Only Trump oh, would ever do this. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. There's never been a fucking uh, a leader that gave their friends special treatment for in criminal prosecution until now. This is a new. This is truly a new day in America. He invented it. Yeah, Trump yeah. invented this. Trump is the author of this. You know. <laughs> and if we get a Biden administration, it'll totally and utterly change. The this will stop. Joe Biden yeah. would yeah. never. He would no never way. ever. Goes without saying. In fact, Joe Biden would prosecute a friend of his worse. Yeah. I know? hold my friends to a higher standard. Yeah, he he treat them tougher. I guess the advantage with Joe Biden, if he was going to hold you uh, to a higher standard, he'd probably forget about it. So it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Why we're here again? Oh, uh, you said I was free to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you get a pardon. Yeah, that's right. See ya. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe Biden is so out of his fucking mind that, you know, I don't know. Hey, he's already working on Scotty. Hey, look at that. Uh, I did that whole episode of how he was out of his fucking mind. So. Hey, he's already working on Scotty. But yeah, I didn't need to work. We're, we all are well, well aware of this before. Fucking I don't um, think I was. You won the nomination. No. I don't but believe so. Let's say about this, TJ. Let, let's go fucking. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I don't no, believe so. Out of his fucking mind. Who said that? TJ fucking Kirk. Nope. Not me. Yeah, now I'm you're all about bro. harm reduction, TJ. Now me, bro, I didn't do nothing. Reduce that harm, TJ. Reduce the harm. We'll reduce that fucking harm, bitch. Does Joe Biden have dementia? I don't think he does. I think Joe Biden is sharp as a goddamn tack, boy. That's right, really? boy. That's right. Cut the malarkey, TJ. He's a fucking... You're a dog. You're a lion dog face pony soldier if you think fucking... Joe Biden. What, what John Wayne, right? hey, look, I'm I'm not as well versed in John Wayne as he. What John Wayne movie was that? This, uh, said that? that was in his classic film, Lion Dog Face Pony Soldier. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a rare yeah. one. Uh, times are changing. The rich and powerful somehow <laughs> skirt justice yet again. That's what new Trump. Trump. That never happened before, Scotty. Uh, T, that's been, one example of that ever happening prior to the uh, never happened. Go See? back and look at fucking in the entire t- entirety of human civilization when there's been. Oh, OK. People. One specific example is all I ask for. Not the entirety of human civilization. So you can't name it because Trump was the first. How about uh, how about fucking uh, what's his name? How about Nixon par- pardoning or not Nixon, but Ford pardoning Ford, Halderman yeah. and Ehrlichman? No. Uh, no, no, that didn't happen. That's, that was justified. That's fine. Oh, okay, Got yeah. It. Nixon himself was pardoned of all crimes. TJ Nixon's good. Nixon's a good guy. Nixon, Nixon was good. What about all those giant corporations <laughs> that pollute the water? No, poison people, kill them. No, no, no. Through faulty products, and they get away with slaps on the wrist. That's capitalism. You know, oh, it's capital. Oh, that's okay. It's all good. So those companies that buy justice and pay fines, that's not just getting away with it. What about uh, PG and E? We just talked about last week. Pain. They killed at least eighty people, and probably, yeah, probably, they, probably they did what they, probably they needed to do. That through other um, basically means of losing power when they needed it to survive. They did what they needed. to That do sounds like something that deserves a slap on the wrist to me. Yeah, it, it, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, just like uh, what's it? Uh, the Roundup. They're paying ten point five billion dollars to settle those uh, cancer lawsuits, but it doesn't cost cancer. But we're just paying the settlements for just you know whatever reason. Ah, give me all right anyway um plebs go away get out of here plebs fuck you plebs you're garbage get out of here fuck out the next the rest of the show is only for patrons fuck you plebs die play the song play the song Show.